Welcome to Windows on the World. We're going to look at an article by Paul Craig Roberts, who usually puts out very powerful information. And it's an article that's been sent to him. There's no source, but he's been pushing it on his website, uh, Paul Craig Roberts from the Institute for Political Economy. And it's called A View We Don't Often Hear. Now, it says, Hi, Paul. The Arctic sea ice is steadily diminishing. The temperature of the Arctic seas is steadily rising. And if these trends continue, some near future month or year, there will be a sudden massive eruption of gigatons of methane from the Arctic region into the atmosphere. The primary, secondary and tertiary effects will be global and dramatic. Most humans will probably be dead as a result within a matter of a very few years or less. It will alter everything, climate, precipitation, winds, temperature, atmospheric, chemistry, global ecology, global crop production, meaning lack thereof, hence no food, and much more. The scenario could even kick in with a vengeance as soon as later this year, or in 2018 or 19. We are drawing closer and closer to the big event. It will happen if we continue on the present global trajectory and it won't take decades to arrive. So I'm going to ask Piers Corbyn what he thinks of this because this, to me, looks like scaremongering on a massive scale and the usual kind of predictions, something terrible is going to happen soon but not yet. Piers, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> well, it is complete nonsense. It's over-the-top alarmism. It's coming now because the warmists are losing and they've got to do anything they can to scare everybody uh, into submission. Uh, and we'll see more of these. Yeah. Um, uh, some years ago we were told that the sea levels are going to rise so much that uh, even Al Gore's house would have, would have been submerged. Yeah. Um, but of course it wasn't, and he, he didn't sell his house either, so we know it wasn't going to be true anyway. Um, this particular stuff, well, first of all, you know, we've got... Things happen in the Arctic, temperatures go up and down, sea, um, sea ice amounts vary. But quite interestingly, during the last many ice age, there were periods of uh, melting Arctic sea ice. And that was because of the wild jet stream of airflow going up and down into the Arctic, bringing mild bits in the Arctic, uh, and also the sea currents uh, going wild. Um, but all of these type of fluctuations are natural and in fact largely predictable and we had another episode just after Christmas if you recall where uh, there was a lack of, of uh, sea ice, there was a lot of uh, mildness in the Arctic and there was associated extreme cold in, in parts of Europe, Russia and there was even snow in the Sahara. So what we had is what we call uh, cold warm dipoles which is warm in one place, cold in another, and that's caused by the wild jet stream, which comes from actually low solar activity. Um, now, okay, this stuff about um, sudden melting of, the, of, 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 of ice in the tundra releasing methane is also nonsense. Um, I mean, for a start, if this type of things were true, then we would have had runaway warming during the medieval warm period, or even in the Roman warm period, which was warmer, or, or during the Bronze Age, which was warmer still. But the world didn't fry then, uh, and humans didn't die, uh, and that's borne out by the fact that we're here now. So this alarmism about methane coming off is complete twaddle, but it rests on a misunderstanding of how so-called greenhouse gases work anyway. Uh, I mean, it, it isn't, it, that isn't how it works. It's not a blanket. Um, the important thing about such gases, if anything, is about the height at which the upper atmosphere can emit radiation, which can vary or will vary with what are called greenhouse gases. But uh, the same things have other effects, which we've discussed on our website, which, which can make the affect the other way around. Um, but even in their own terms, if you have a certain amount of warming in their own nonsense theories due to an amount of greenhouse gas, 
to get the same amount of warming again, you've got to have double the amount of greenhouse gas, and then get the same again, you've got to have four times the amount. So, so you know, their own mathematics would never produce this this runaway nonsense, which this scare story article produces. It says here, the CO2 build-up is believed to be the cause of the warming that is melting the polar ice caps and the permafrost. A sudden release of methane equivalent to a thousand gigatons of CO2 could be the consequence. This is about as much CO2 as industrial civilization has released in 150 years. So you can see what they're doing here. Do you want to address that part? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's total look. Look, when um, North America was covered with bison, there was tons of CO2, well, gigatons of CO2, being blasted out daily. And actually, it was a cold period. So this is this is just nonsense. Methane, sorry, it's this methane being sh shot out, not CO2. Um, it doesn't work in the way they claim. There's no evidence for anything like that working in in the way they claim. These are just silly scare stories. There's another bit here. It says warming also has effects on the oceans, on the ah. acid level of ah. the water, and the ability of oceans to absorb CO2 and retain oxygen. Um, now, this is quite interesting. They're also saying the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is dying. There's two points here that need to be addressed. But first one, on the acidity of the oceans, that was explained by one of the participants in the recent climate conference, which was banned from UCL. Um, I think it's Martin Hovbeck. Yes, um, yes. I think that's his name. It's, it, it's, de it's definitely on the beginning of that video. And he was explaining why... The, um, the Pacific and the Atlantic are different and the amount of acidity is different because of the volcanic activity. Yes. Well, the first thing to understand is that the sea contains 50 times more carbon dioxide than the atmosphere. So even if all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere went into the sea, it would only have a tiny effect. And furthermore, the sea is a buffer solution, which means that it, 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 if something goes into it, it's going to get absorbed by various chemical processes and not make much difference. So the idea of ocean acidification caused by CO2 is nonsense. Now, then they talk about warming driving off CO2. Well, hang on, that contradicts their idea about the more CO2 going in there. They're saying the warming is driving off. So what are they saying? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Um, but the idea that the oceans are going to get more acidic and so-called, because they're already alkaline, they mean, mean less alkaline, and cause death to the Great Barrier Reef is complete nonsense. The Barrier Reef is in very good shape, not dying at all. The only places where you don't have Great Barrier Reef working well is on the outlets of rivers, because that, that uh, water coming from there is fresh water and contains all sorts of other things, which, which, yeah. the, which the Great Barrier Reef doesn't like. But the Great Barrier Reef is not in any danger due to carbon dioxide whatsoever. Yeah, they were saying that a couple of degrees in temperature rise was affecting it, and they also go on about coral bleaching. This has all been explained quite recently by scientists who look at the Barrier Reef all the time and have done for, for the last um, considerable amount sure. of years. Yeah. This stuff is written by idiot journalists, scaremongering nonsense, uh, to help the globalist agenda. Yeah, well, let's just round up here. For example, it says, the more polarised is lost, the faster the warming. Previous events that destroyed the balance in the biosphere resulted in life extinctions. The belief that a 7 billion population in a carbon-based culture cannot alter the balance in the biosphere seems to be wishful thinking not supported by science. What do you say to that? Well, for a start, man's activity in the world is actually pretty small compared with nature. I mean, people have to understand that. They, we might feel we're important when we're flying in aeroplanes, but look, the amount of carbon dioxide that mankind produces is only 4% of the total flux of carbon dioxide that comes in and out of the biosphere on a daily basis by termites, by dying animals, dying vegetation, or, or plants growing, taking it in, and so forth. So man is 4% of that. And termites are 10 times man's contribution. So if, if man is going to rule the world through CO2, um, 
termites and the whole of nature have to conspire with man in order to do the same thing and produce CO2 at the same time. I mean, what the warmest believe in is a conspiracy theory of nature of the most insane order ever suggested. Thanks very much, Piers. And we'd like to hear from Paul Craig Roberts. Very much admire the work you've done in the past and that you continue to do. So we'd like to talk to you about this article. If you want to get in touch, please do. Well, that's it from this right small in. section of Windows on the World. We'll see you soon. Welcome to Windows on the World. I'm Mark Windows. Now, over the years, we've put out a lot of information. Uh, the Windows on the World show has run for several years now. We've exposed corruption, found solutions, and put out some very useful information on many subjects since we started doing this. This includes, of course, the bigger picture, along with well-researched history, science, and, of course, health matters, which we also cover. Now, our initial website was landofthefree.co.uk, and this was set up to fight the corporate courts, rogue bailiffs, and the unlawful actions of public officials. I and many others have successfully fought criminal bailiff companies and won in court against dishonest councils. This information is all still available. The journalistic integrity of Windows on the World is very important and we try to put out information that's forensically accurate and simplistic as possible. So we try and put everything out in a very easy way for the people to understand because over the years there's been a lot of misinformation and disinformation, especially with where people stand within the law and it's got a lot of people into trouble. So we've We've always stayed on the right side of the law but being able to empower people to go into court and do the right thing that's very important to us. Now I put this information out to the public because I feel it needs to be there and even within so-called alternative media there is much uh, information which is misleading and incorrect. In fact, all the things the now ridiculous mainstream media accuses the alternative media of. There are people putting out stuff that's very, very unhelpful and we try not to do that. So we accept no funding from anybody and are completely independent. And it's now increasingly necessary that we get some help to fund what we're doing. We're looking for sponsors from self-employed small business sector which, as we know, is being destroyed. And we cover this a lot on the show with the plans for regeneration, the soaring business rates, and the destruction of what we used to know as our environment, because we're finding that people now are being pushed out and socially engineered from the places that they need to be. Um, we'd also like to appeal to individuals who might be able to donate. Now, the donate button on the site you can just scroll down to the bottom of the page and it's also on every article and every video on the site um, on windowsontheworld.net. Now I've never asked for any donations before but things are getting a bit tighter for us and we want to carry on and expand what we're doing. That's the most important thing, to expand what we're doing and be able to bring you much more information which is very difficult at the moment because there's just a few of us. So. The bottom line is, if you can spare a few quid and enjoy what we're doing, press the donate button, we'll be very grateful. And if there's anybody out there, small businesses, who benefit from the sort of information that we put out, and we know there's quite a few because we've been contacted by them, if you'd like to make a small contribution or help out in any way, we'd be most grateful. That's the end of that, and we'll see you soon on Windows on the World.